I stand here with Cody from New Hampshire, and uh, Cody, you've got some uh, you've got some concerns on your mind. Uh, you know, for, for just bringing up in a, a family in the sort of authoritarian world we've got. Tell me about that. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't look good. I can tell you that, and uh, I think it's time for some change. I think that um, you know when I, you know uh, raising a six-year-old and uh, when. Um, you know, when, when we were, you know, my, my girlfriend was pregnant, you know, we had concerns about raising a, a, a kid in today's America. And, um, you know, obviously we need some, uh, we definitely need a change. You know, we thought that, you know, I actually, you know, to, to be honest, I, I, uh, I had voted for uh, Barack Obama in uh, 2008 and, uh, you know, on the, uh, on the words of hope and change. And uh, obviously, you know, we didn't get that hope and change. So. I'm out here today to vote for Ron Paul, for you know, to, for hope and change, and uh, hopefully we get him in. Tell me a little bit about the specific concerns. Have you had any personal experiences that have that have heightened your concerns about what's going on? Oh yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the loss of liberty, you know, the, uh, the the bank bailouts, you know, uh, the fact that you know that uh, when we founded this country, uh, it was supposed to be you know one and two equals one. And instead, one and two equals three and four. And that's, you know, I mean, for, for example, the bank bailouts was exactly what, you know, what is, you know, the real situation. It's, it's we're not really under, under our, uh, you know, control of our, you know, of us or, or the politicians. It's more of, you know, the corporations and the banks, you know. And, um, I, I, you know, the, the biggest mistake I think we ever made was uh, getting rid of that Glass-Steagall Act that would have kept the banks in control. And if, um, I guess if we had had that, these bank, bank billets would have, wouldn't have happened. We may have, we may have had the banks fall. Uh, it wouldn't have been good either. But, um, you know, if we were under an honest government, we would have had the right measures to, to correct the problem. We might have gone through a depression much smaller than what we're looking at right now. Uh, I wouldn't call it a recession. That's just a lie to me, you know. And, um, I mean, people out of where I lost my job two years ago, I had to take an underemployment job. So. It sounds like you're seeing sort of a divide between the people in the government or the people in the corporations. Oh, yeah. But do you see a win-win solution between the two where both can come out ahead? Not right now, no. As long as we keep voting in these people um, who, you know, we're just not going to get any change. And uh, until we stop voting in, you know, these people who are corrupt, um, it's all you're going to get. You're not going to get any change. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. It's not going to change. And... Um, you know, I think that we have to stop, you know, it, I, I can use some more harsh words, but I won't, you know, but it's like, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you use taxpayers' money to support banks that were corrupt? You know, how do you do that? That's, 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 that's ridiculous. These, that's <laughs> cool. They were, they were cheering our Ron Paul signs. Yeah. But um, I, my biggest thing is that, um, you know, what you see, I, I was I was once in the, in, in the stock market, and what I noticed was, this is on the surface, what I noticed was is that um, these banks they and, and the corporations, they, they sell their stocks at, you know, for one forty-five fifth. I think it's what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but I know people who are in it, they're like, Hey, you know, this is a Ponzi scheme. You know, this ain't real. And uh, you know, I put all this money into it, and I'm like, you know what? They're right. It's like they 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 break the game. Uh, meaning, like they, you know, they they're insiders. They're not, you know, what I'm saying they know what they set the price, and they they grab the real stocks, and everybody else gets left with the derivatives or or the bad stocks. It's like the only people that get the real stocks and get the real value of a stock. Is, is the one real stock out of that 45 and the other two duplicates. So it's all, it's all, dupli it's all duplications and we bail them out when it all falls apart because it's not, you know, to me it's not, it's not the real stock market, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, um, it's a controlled stock market it's a controlled and stock a Ponzi market. stock market. Well, yeah, it's insider trading. Kind of like the old Iraq stock market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that, right? All right. But, uh, yeah, I just don't think it's it's right, and uh, you know it needs to change. And I, I just think we, you know, I, I, 
I don't know. Uh, it's the more we get, the more people we get to vote for Ron Paul. You know, if we get Ron Paul in, uh, I think we're going to see some real change. It may be slow and maybe painful. It's going to be painful. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. And uh, I mean, we're talking about going from what it's been for I don't know how long, like 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah. If not, you know, more than that. Hey. And uh, it's going to be, you know. It's gonna be probably. I mean, Ron's 76, so if he gets in, <laughs> depends on his. You know, it depends on his health. I think he's in great shape for a guy who's 76. But I think he could have taken Rick Perry out if that had gone a little further the other night. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> what a jerk! Huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Talk about being a baby. I mean, this guy, you know, has some control. You know, Jesus. I mean, the guy, the guy is 76 years old. Going <laughs> grabbing his wrist. Come on. Give me a friggin' break. Alan Access. Oh yeah, you know it, baby, right here. With all these good signatures back here. Oh, <laughs> Ron Paul. Hey. As long as they vote for us, that's... That's the main thing. I'm hoping he comes back home then. He needs to come on right back home, tell Ronnie Ron. He can come on back home to the Libertarian Party, where you belong. And I'm tired of seeing the Republicans dissing you. Come on back home, baby. We got, we, we got the big base for you, and we're going to get you in there. We're the big hitters now, so don't worry about it. We got it off you. <laughs> I've seen what they did to him in Minnesota. That was a damn shame. He couldn't even speak at the main podium. He had to go to the Target Center. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was there. I seen it. That was the, that was the biggest disrespectful thing they could have did. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, you guys keep it up, though. You're doing a good job. I'm Daryl Bonner. Thanks, Daryl. I appreciate it. Hey, hey come, Paul, I said keep come to RiddlerReport.com and watch me.